Hi, this is Rebecca Lane, your public speaking instructor, and I wanted to talk you through your industry professional speech. I want to talk you through this assignment. Um, we may cover this in class, we may not, but for those of you who miss class or miss the explanation, this should help you out tremendously. Okay, so your industry professional speech should be about your personal industry, um, what you are going to school for here at Full Sail. So, for example, if you are um, a recording arts student, then you'll want to talk about something in the field of recording arts. If you're a film student, you'll want to talk about something in the field of film. This is a two to four minute speech or three to five minutes, depending on what I say in class. So please notice that this may vary depending on how many students we have, how quickly we've gotten through the material, stuff like that. But the number of slides is always the same. You want to have 12 to 20 slides. You will need to have sources for this speech. So you may not have had sources in your last speech. So this might be new to you. You will probably want to reach out to the librarians for this assignment. The librarians are awesome. I expect you to use sources like EBSCOhost and LexisNexis. And because this speech is going to be an informative speech, you are going to teach us about something in your industry. All right, so for those slides, because up here we said slides, right? You will be using either Keynote or PowerPoint. Um, I say pick your favorite. There are tutorials available. If you look at this references section here, you'll find some tutorials that will help teach you um, exactly how to do what we need you to do in Keynote or PowerPoint. So make sure that you check those out. There are some student examples too, lots of sources. and so here's the purpose. Your goal is to inform your audience about a topic in your chosen major. Here's the deal. Even those of you who don't think you will be uh, doing public speaking at some point, at some point you will probably be asked to train somebody. You will probably be asked to explain this awesome technique that you have originated. You will probably be expected to explain what you did. And this is practice in doing that and organizing your ideas in such a way that people are actually interested in listening to you. So the assignment description, just like I said, at some point you are going to need to make words come out of your mouth in a way that makes sense. And ideally you want words to come out of your mouth in a way that makes sense when you're talking about the techniques and technologies in your field, right? Because you hopefully will be an expert on the techniques and technologies in your field. And so one of the best ways to really start to develop that kind of expertise, because I can know a lot about something and look like I don't know much if I can't talk about it, right? So you want to make sure that you can talk about these things. So for this speech, reflect on your major. You can think about stuff that's happened in the past. You can stuff. You can think about stuff that's happening currently. You can think about um, a technology that you think is really cool. You can think about a technique that is really cool. Uh, you can talk about history. It could be a how-to video. There are so many options for this speech. Ideally, you want to talk about something that you already know a little bit about. You can go ahead and explore new and exciting stuff, and I completely support you if you want to do that, but this is a public speaking class. What I'm hoping to help you do is I'm hoping to help you talk clearly about things that you already know a little bit about. So we don't have to get brand new information. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. I'd like to build on the information that you are already using. So how are you going to pick your topic? Well, here's what I would recommend. First, I recommend going to Google. So perhaps I'm a computer animation major. So I'm going to type in computer animation. And I'm going to see what comes up in Google. So Wikipedia might be your friend here. So let's see what Wikipedia says. So we've got CGI. We've got a simple example, we've got an explanation, we've got the history. Okay, so we just said that we could talk about the history of computer animation. So, in most 3D computer animation systems, so I could talk about an animator, I could talk about a 3D computer animation system, I could talk, so anything where it's got a special link, 
that's something that I might be able to talk about, right? Remember, this is a three to five minute speech or a two to four minute speech. That's really short. Think about how long it takes you to tell a story to your buddy, right? So we could talk about motion capture. So what happens when I click on these? So we can't use Wikipedia as an actual legitimate source, right? But we can use Wikipedia as a jumping off point. It's really awesome for that. You could talk about rotoscope, match moving. I mean, all of these things. You can teach me how to do them. You can tell me what it is. Uh, you can tell me where it came from, as long as you can relate it to your industry. Okay, so now that we've talked about finding your topic, you want to make sure that you develop a thesis statement. So you don't want to just want to say, today I'm going to talk to you about uh, a virtual skeleton. You'd probably do better saying, today I want to tell you how to make the most simple virtual skeleton. The most basic virtual skeleton you can make or the most diverse. So we want to have an angle, right? I'm going to teach you how to design one. I'm going to teach you how to use a virtual skeleton. I'm going to teach you how to put clothing on a virtual skeleton. So you see how we're getting really specific here? I'm going to teach you how to texture fabric. Sometimes I've seen people in, in the film department do a pretty cool job on the speech also. I've had people teach us how to record scenes in a moving car. One whole speech just about recording scenes in a moving car. Um, with recording arts, I've had people teach us how to use one button in Pro Tools. All the things you can do with one button. So this is a very specific speech. So you do want to make sure the information is pertinent. You want to make sure it's actually relevant. You also want to make sure that you're including little known facts. So probably you have a bunch of people in your public speaking lecture class who are in your same major. So think about how exciting it's going to be if you give information that everybody is already aware of. Remember, we're in class for sometimes four and sometimes eight hours at a time. If everybody is giving information that everybody already knows, it's going to be a snooze fest, right? So you want to make sure that you are giving us exciting stuff. When we're talking about exciting stuff, sometimes you can share testimonials. Now, this entire speech cannot be about a person, but that doesn't mean that you can't use one person's testimonial about that technology. So you can use a story about how somebody used this technology. You could use a moment in history when somebody developed something. So that doesn't mean you can't eliminate people from your support materials. So think about that. You will want to make sure you're including images that represent your topic. Make sure you're following all the guidelines that we cover in the visual design lecture. But you can use still photos, you can use DVD captures, uh, whatever you've got at CompFight, right? You can use video clips. Remember, there's a time limit on video clips and a time limit on audio. Um, and you will want to make sure that before you speak, you've double-checked to make sure that everything is compatible. So I do not want to hear you speak about a person and only a person. I've heard a lot of speeches about how Jay-Z is the best musician ever, and then people talk a lot about how he developed all of these different brands. So first, developing branding doesn't really support that thesis, right? He's the best musician ever because musicians sell t-shirts? Not exactly, right? So make sure that you're supporting things. Um, but I'm not, I don't want you to speak about a person. I really want you to speak about a technique. Uh, teach us about something. Don't list the features. Remember in this class we're talking about using concrete versus abstract language, but we're also talking about using narrative and examples and analogies. So give me a fact or two and then show me how it plays out in real life. Tell me about a time that you used it correctly. Tell me about a time that your best friend totally messed it up. Tell me about those moments where uh, things really worked. And remember, if you're telling me a story, you also want to go back to the vivid language, right? So the language that applies to our five senses. Go back to that lecture and remember it. Um, and in, be very intentional with your language. 
Um, we don't want to state that a person or a technology or uh, a product is the best technology person, product, director, producer ever. That's not specific enough, and it's hard to support. So make sure that you are teaching us how to do something, not stating an opinion. And remember that there is a time limit on the amount of video that you can use. Okay, so here's this last part. You are expected to turn in a typed copy of your final speaking outline. Check out your textbook to see what I mean when I talk about a speaking outline. You are also expected to turn in your working outline that you brought to class uh, and had your peers look at. And when you had your classmates look at your worksheet, work, look, at, look at your outline, they also filled out a worksheet for you. So you are expected to be bring three different documents when you speak for this speech. Your first draft working outline, the worksheet your group members filled out for you, and your final draft that shows all of the changes you were told to make. You're not going to submit this through FSO like these instructions say, that is incorrect. But you will be printing them out and handing them to me before you speak. I will not accept them the day after. I will not accept them after you speak. You cannot speak and then run to the printer and then bring me your speech outline. So that's not going to work. Now, if you're really looking for an example, we have an example here. Evelyn did a really awesome job. So make sure you watch Evelyn's speech, and that gives you a feel for what I am looking for. So I'd like to show you the assets that you have available. First, I do expect you to use this outline worksheet. Make sure that you follow these directions carefully. If you are unsure of what goes in any of these sections, go ahead and read the page numbers. Now, if your page numbers in your textbook are different from mine, that's okay. You know what is really awesome is your textbook has a feature called an index. And the index in this book is really good. So go ahead and look at the index. Remember your connect with audience. It needs to be two parts. Why does your audience care? Who are they that they should care? And why do you care? What is your personal connection with this topic? This is a part where you could share a brief moment of your personal experience. You do want to give us a thesis statement. Make sure that it's specific. And you will want to give us a preview statement. Remember, your preview statement outlines your three main points. And remember, your main points are kind of like chapter headings. Finally, you do want to have a conclusion. Remember, your conclusion reminds us of your three main points. I like to choose a favorite moment from each of my main points because I like to incorporate repetition. We've talked a lot about repetition in class, but I don't always like to use verbatim repetition, especially in such a short speech. So thematic repetition is something that, that I really recommend with this. And then remind me what your thesis statement was, and then end with a clincher. And so your clincher is usually an impactful statement that ties it all the way back to your open with impact. So remember, when you deliver your speech, the very first words out of your mouth are going to be whatever you write for your Open with Impact. So you want to choose that really carefully. Remember, it's a ramp into our topic. It starts to get the audience generating thought toward your topic. It's not the same thing as your thesis statement. If you look at your Open with Impact and it has most of the same words as your thesis statement, you need to change one of these guys, and probably this is the guy that you need to change, okay? so. Let me know if you have questions. If you need help finding sources, I strongly recommend talking to the librarians here at Full Sail. They are incredible people. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing how you do on this. The final thing I want to call your attention to is the rubric. So you'll see if we click on this document in the assets, this comes up. And this says basically what we just talked through. But what it has at the very bottom is it has your rubric. So look, this is how I'm grading you this time. Delivery, eye contact is worth 10 points. This is how we define eye contact. Voice, so is there variation? Does your voice go up? Does your voice go down? Um, are you talking, are you changing up your pacing? Is you talking fast sometimes? Are you talking slow sometimes? Is there energy? Um, and yes, energy is down here too. So. This, are you using pauses? 
Are you um, avoiding non-fluencies? Stuff like that. Body language. So body language, this is going to refer to how you use proxemics. So are you moving around the space? Are you planting? I recommend people plant for about 10 seconds at a time. Are you using hand gestures? Are the hand gestures nervous or are they adding to the words that you're saying? Are you standing up straight? Next, we want to look at introductions. So I actually sit down and do a checklist with this introduction. I listen for your attention getter. I listen for your thesis. I listen for your logical orientation. So your logical orientation is your preview statement. I listen for that. I listen for psychological orientation. This is your connect with audience. So did you tell me what your personal connection was? Did you tell your audience why they cared? Um, and your personal connection goes under credibility established. So these are exactly what I'm listening to. I just turn this into a checklist. Um, and you'll see that this is one, two, three, four, five. So these are two points each. For each of these missing, you lose two points off of this 10. Next, we want to think about the body. So is the information that you're choosing pertinent to the thesis statement you established up here? Am I hearing your sources cited out loud? Um, is it coherently organized? Stuff like that. Finally, I'm listening for your conclusion. So it needs to be smooth. It can't be rushed. Um, sometimes people see that final time card and, and they don't even get to their conclusion. If you don't get to your conclusion, you will be cut off if you hit the time limit. And uh, at that point, you will just not get credit for your conclusion. And that's really a bummer. Professionalism. Make sure you're acting like a grown-up. Be professional. Preparation. Your outline is worth 10 whole points off the top of your grade. Now, remember, this is APA formatted reference page. That is worth five whole points off of this, your APA formatting. And... The rest of it, your preparedness, practice, polish, presentation, the rest of your preparation boils down to your outline. So two points for the final speaking draft, two points for the original draft that you bought to class and your group members marked up, and one point for that worksheet that we completed in class. And finally, we've got the slideshow. So make sure that you follow all of the guidelines set forth here in the slideshow. And if you do not have your printed outline, you do not get credit for it. All right, so finally, let me know if you have questions. I'm really looking forward to seeing your industry professional speech. I'll talk to you soon.